When it comes to the question of alien celestial bodies that may be home to extraterrestrial life forms, one particular satellite repeatedly becomes the focus of scientific attention, Jupiter's moon, Europa. Today, you'll learn why more than a few experts consider it likely that we will one day find the first extraterrestrial life forms in history here and what characterizes the constant companion of Jupiter. Want to learn more about the most fascinating celestial bodies and groundbreaking discoveries in space on a regular basis? Then don't forget to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to never miss one of our videos again. Feel free to show us you like the topics of our posts with a thumbs up. Europa Dimensions and Shape At first glance, it seems that a celestial body could not be more hostile to life than the icy moon Europa. The surface of Jupiter's permanent companion is topped not only by a thick crust of ice, but also by bone-chillingly cold temperatures. Specifically, the thermometer on the satellite never climbs higher than negative 238 degrees Fahrenheit. With an intrinsic diameter of about 1,939 miles, Europa is the smallest of Jupiter's four large satellites, also known as the Galilean moons. As the name of these satellites suggests, it was none other than the Italian scholar Galileo Galilei, who added these celestial bodies to the star charts at the beginning of the 17th century. As Jupiter's second innermost moon, Europa takes about three days and 14 minutes to completely orbit the largest representative of the planetary system. Just like the other inner moons of Jupiter, Europa always shows one and the same side to its galactic fixed point. In total, the moon's icy exterior covers an area of more than 18 million square miles, roughly the size of the African continent. The nature of the satellite makes Europa one of the brightest moons in the entire solar system. The albedo of this celestial body, which is the measure of its reflectivity, is 0.64. In other words, 64% of all incident solar radiation is reflected by Europa. To put this into perspective, although the Earth's moon appears to us on starry nights as a brightly shining disk in the firmament, its albedo is actually just 0.12. The icy surface of Jupiter's moon is not the only characteristic that catches our eye when we look at the satellite. On the other hand, we have the large scale, reddish shimmering colorations on the outer surface of the moon. This is the result of deposited minerals, but also the countless furrows decorating the surface of Europa belong without doubt to the most remarkable optical characteristics of the celestial body. In fact, however, the depressions in the soil have only a relatively small depth. Basically, the satellite's surface is known for being exceptionally flat. The countless furrows and trenches that crisscross Jupiter's moon are called lineae. The larger of these rifts have a width of about 12 miles. How exactly this complex network of furrows was formed has not yet been fully unraveled. However, it seems likely that the lineae were formed either by cryovolcanism or by the eruption of geysers. Finally, the appearance of Europa is completed by special circular and elliptical objects called lenticuli. These formations were most likely created by rising warmer ice. Particularly remarkable is the fact that Europa's surface has only very few impact craters, which have relatively small dimensions. So far, researchers have been able to locate just 41 impact sites on the outer surface of the celestial body. The largest of all known impact sites, the crater Taliesin, has a diameter of about 31 miles. The low crater density on Europa suggests that the surface of the moon regularly renews itself in the course of natural processes, or is geologically still very young. Thus, the crater density suggests that the satellite surface is probably no older than 90 million years. The Subterranean Ocean A look at the inner structure of the moon finally leads us to that groundbreaking insight, which makes the satellite again and again the center of scientific interest. Experts are now certain that beneath the icy outer crust of the celestial body lies a liquid ocean of unimagined dimensions. However, the exact relationship between the outer ice layer and the water underneath is not yet known. While some researchers estimate the depth of the subglacial ocean at just a mile or two, others suspect 
that the subterranean sea could have a maximum depth of 60 miles. Although Jupiter's moon is significantly smaller than our blue home planet, this would mean that there would be twice as much liquid water as on Earth. And it is well known that the existence of water in a permanently liquid form is an essential building block for the emergence of life. It dissolves nutrients for organisms contained in it, transports important chemical compounds, and also enables living cells to get rid of waste products. Many experts believe that the bottom of the subglacial ocean on Europa has a rocky texture. The constant interactions between the subsurface ocean and the rocks could possibly release nutrients necessary for the survival of certain organisms. The most convincing evidence that there is a liquid ocean beneath Europa's ice crust comes from NASA's Galileo spacecraft. The unmanned spacecraft, which explored Jupiter and its satellites between 1995 and 2003, made 12 flybys on the icy moon. During the investigation, the probe's magnetometer revealed that the celestial body has a weak magnetic field. The data collected by Galileo suggested that there must be an electrically conductive fluid beneath the moon's surface such as a sea of salt water. Also, the unusual arrangement of lineae, which in reality we find in different places than scientists had expected, could be caused by the subglacial saltwater ocean. Is life possible on Europa? Since the icy moon, according to our knowledge, is home to a gigantic ocean, a central question arises. Is it possible that the satellite is also home to living beings? Scientists agree that, in addition to the persistence of liquid water, a number of other basic chemical building blocks are needed to pave the way for the development of life. These include carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus. In fact, most experts believe it is likely that these elements were present on Europa when it was formed. In addition, the Galileo probe was able to detect layered silicates on the surface of the satellite. Thereby, the assumption is obvious that these were brought once by a galactic missile on the moon. This discovery is of enormous importance to researchers because the objects in question often contain organic compounds, which are also known as the building blocks of life. The basic chemical elements that make the emergence of living things possible in the first place could be found both in Europa's ice shell and in the subterranean ocean. The so-called tidal warming could thereby fuel a process within which the water as well as the nutrients are put into constant circulation. In order to get to the bottom of the central question of the possible presence of life on Europa, it's therefore essential to analyze the exact chemical composition of the celestial body in detail as part of future exploratory missions. The background to this is that living things obtain energy from their natural environment through chemical reactions, and it's well known that all life forms require energy to remain viable. But where would the living things we might find on Europa get the energy they need? After all, the moon is so far from the sun that this process cannot proceed by photosynthesis. It's probable, therefore, the engine of life on Europa would be powered by other chemical reactions. Meanwhile, Europa's surface is exposed to Jupiter's constant radiation. For life on the surface, this means an extremely limiting factor. However, things could be different in the area of the subterranean ocean. Due to the spatial constellations, Jupiter's radiation is not able to penetrate to the subglacial saltwater ocean. Basically, the incident radiation splits the water molecules in Europa's atmosphere. Should the oxygen left behind in this process succeed in reaching the ocean below the crust, it could provide a chemical energy source for living microorganisms there. If there are even formations at the bottom of this ocean that are comparable to the hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the Earth's deep sea, numerous chemical nutrients could also be released there that would make the emergence of life possible. Indeed, many theories are based on the fact that the first living creatures on Earth also developed at so-called black smokers. While all these assumptions regarding the possible existence of life forms on Europa paint an extremely promising picture, there are nevertheless some indications that suggest that the icy moon could actually be much more hostile to life than the experts hope. For example, areas on Europa's surface have already been discovered that were covered with concentrated sulfuric acid and hydrogen peroxide. In fact, some researchers believe that these corrosive substances originate directly from the sub glacial ocean. Accordingly, the ocean in question could have been subject to pronounced volcanism. This could explain, for example, the presence of the sulfur. Only later missions will be able to provide a definitive answer to the question of extraterrestrial life forms on Jupiter's moon. In just a few years, ESA would like to send the JUICE probe into the realms of the Galilean moons, primarily to investigate the presumed oceans beneath the surfaces. 
This project is to be followed one day by a further mission, which has the direct investigation of the subglacial sea as its goal. A so-called cryobot spacecraft will melt its way through the thick ice crust of the celestial body and then lower a kind of submarine into Europa's ocean. Now it's your turn. What are your thoughts on the fascinating icy moon Europa? Just let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time.